All right, our other piece of um, simulation code is the bootstrap. So the bootstrap is the one that says, what are some other reasonable values we could have observed? So that's the most reasonable for confidence intervals. Um, and to do bootstrapping, we sample from our data set with replacement, and we find a bootstrap statistic based on that sample. We're sort of pretending like we can get more samples from the population by resampling from our original data set. So um, we're going to use this technique to make a confidence interval. We're going to use that same slope coefficient that we were looking at, SAT verbal and GPA. And again, here's that relationship. So here's the slope that we actually saw. And now if there was really a relationship, what are some other slopes we could have seen? You know, slightly more positive, maybe slightly less positive. We're pretty sure that we're not going to see anything negative, that it would be pretty unreasonable if there was a relationship to see something negative. So um, the way to do a bootstrap sample is to select rows from the data set uniformly at random with replacement. And there's a function, this is from the mosaic package called resample. So I could press play on this plot a few times to get a sense for what that's going to do. So um, let's look at some extreme points and see if they get included in our bootstrap sample. So there's one point here at um, 4.0 and like a 450 SAT. And there's a point over here that's really far up in the corner. So we're going to see if either of those points appear in our resample. So let's hit the play button one time. Okay, so it looks like I do still have that person who was at a 4.0 and 450 GPA, or 450 SAT, but we're missing that, that point here. So um, we may have gotten uh, some of these points more than once. Uh, in fact, I'm going to put in an alpha equals 0 0.5 so we can see if some of these um, get repeated. I'll put that in up here again. So let's look at the original data. So there were a few repeated values in our original data, but like this person, there was just one person there, just one person there. So now let's do a single resample. Okay, this time I didn't get that person with the 4.0 at all or that really high point, but I got um, these points a couple times. I got this point a couple times. Let's press play again. Okay, now I did get that person once. It looks like I got this person twice because they're darker. Uh, here, I didn't get that 4.0 person, but I did get this person up here. So every time we're going to get an individual point or not, we're not breaking the relationship at all. We're maintaining the relationship. So the point is going to be in its original position. It's just whether we include it in our resample or not. So when we resample, we have sampling with replacement, which means we could get the same dot, the same person more than once. Okay. So um, we're seeing that the, the inclusion of points is changing, and so is the slope. So I can go back and look at a few of these different slopes. Um, and they look like different slopes, but they're all pretty positive. I don't see any negative slopes. So my sense, just from doing a few of these and looking at it visually, is that we're going to see all positive slopes in our confidence interval. But let's actually do the whole procedure. So um, let's look again at our summary. So this is, again, relying on those conditions being true for inf inference. And doing this confidence interval, that's assuming that we can use the t distribution. Um, but instead, let's use a bootstrap distribution. Uh, this is an old comment. I'm going to do 5,000. So I'm going to do similar steps that I did for hypothesis testing. Um, I don't have to hypothesize here because I'm not doing a hypothesis, but I'm still going to take the first year GPA and then specify the response and explanatory. And then I'm going to generate 5,000 reps of type equal bootstrap. So this part of the code is different. And then I'm going to calculate the stat equal slope. So um, again, I could do this, you know, I could just make one bootstrap sample if I wanted to. Let's see, slope boot. So this is going to be a, um, a sample with replacement. So I might see the same person more than once. It looks like maybe I got this person with a 2.0 and a 400 SAT verbal a couple times, um, but uh, some other people might not be included. 
but I don't want to do that when I'm going to make 5,000 uh, bootstrap samples, so I'm going to compress it down at the end. I'm going to calculate the slope statistic. So if I control enter here, again, it's going to take a minute because it has to do a sample with replacement, find the slope, sample with replacement, find the slope. Okay, now it's done. And now each observation in here is a slope value, another slope value that we could have observed. So these look different than the slopes we saw in our slope test, which were small, maybe kind of uh, close to zero. These are, are more like our original um, slope. Uh, but just like we did for the previous randomization, we can make a density plot of these bootstrap samples. And if I just did this, there's the density plot. It's always going to be centered around our original sample statistic. Um, I could put it on there if I want to. I'm going to put on the x-intercept, that original slope. It's going to be right in the middle. Yep, so it's going to be centered around that value. But it's not going to be a perfectly symmetric distribution, like a t distribution or a normal distribution. So that's one of the things that's really cool about the bootstrap and also about randomization, is that you can get these distributions that aren't perfectly symmetric. Um, and then if we wanted to, we could use you know, the empirical rule to kind of eyeball what's the middle 95%. Maybe I would say uh, you know, 0 0.01 out to 0 0.0025, something like that. Um, the book has three methods for creating a confidence interval from a bootstrap distribution. My favorite method is method one. So on the homework, um, there's a question that asks you to use all the methods, and I just am saying don't do you know, these parts that ask you to do the other methods. Just do the, the main one, the first one. So here's method one. Um, method one, you just use get CI, slope boot, and get CI will find the middle 95% by default. So if I run this, um, it finds me the middle 95%. It goes from 0 0.0009. Okay, that's basically 0 0.001 to 0 0.00243, and that's basically what I guessed based on just kind of eyeballing it. Cool, that's the middle 95%. And if I wanted to, I could do level equal 0 0.9 to get a 90% interval, um, etc. So I can change that. Um, if I wanted to, I could also visualize. Um, if I visualize this, uh, then I can maybe see it. Um, as a histogram. I don't know if that's better than the density plot. Um, but yeah, so get CI, that is just going to get me the middle 95%. So by default, it's a percentile interval. It finds the, the middle percent. Um, method two is to assume that the bootstrap distribution is normal, which I think that's a really weird assumption. If the distribution was normal, we could just use a normal distribution to approximate the sampling distribution. Why would we even make a bootstrap distribution? But um, that's another method. Um, I don't really understand the arguments for this method. Um, but in this case, we would use the standard deviation of that bootstrap distribution as our estimate for the standard error when we make our confidence interval. And so GitCI actually has um, a type equal SE, which um, is this multiplier by standard error. Um, you have to give it a point estimate for, for this method because it's gonna center it around the exact point estimate rather than um, the, the mean of the bootstrap distribution, which might be a little bit off from this. It'll be almost this, but it might be a little off. So if I control enter here, I get a slightly different um, interval. Let's go back and get, here was my original interval just based on the percentiles. And here's the one that's based on uh, assuming it's normal. They're almost the same. And then method three is a new method in this edition of the textbook. And I, I don't get it. Um, so it wants you to use a scaled bootstrap distribution, uh, by which it means it wants you to correct for the mean and standard deviation of that distribution, which I think is sort of turning it into a normal distribution or z-scores a little bit. It wants you to find the quantiles, so that percentile idea, and then flip them um, in order to reverse the effect. Like if the bootstrap distribution was skewed, then the skewness would get sent to the other side. 
I don't really know why that would be a good idea, but um, here's how I think it works. So we've got our slope boot data set, which has these um, slope values. I could mutate my stat. So I'm going to overload, I'm going to overwrite the original stat by taking the stat minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So uh, maybe I'll put my old stat is equal to stat, and then we'll do this new version of stat. Let's see if this works. So here's my old stat and here's my stat. So this is 0.11 standard deviations off the mean, 0 0.02 standard devi deviations off the mean. I don't know. Um, and then you make your confidence interval by the point estimate plus the percentiles from the get CI times uh, the standard error from the original summary table. So you use this standard error Again, this just feels like utter nonsense to me. Um, let's see if this will actually work. Uh, oh, and I've done something wrong because now I have two pieces. Anyway, uh, that code doesn't quite work, but I think that this method is, is pretty strange. So um, I'm not gonna worry about that too much. Um, all right, so you could compare those intervals. Um, let's just look back at the one that I like again slope boot, which is the middle 95%. Oh, I was like, why are these numbers so strange? It's because I um, uh, standardized uh, that stat. So let's, uh, I don't know how to fix that. I guess we could rerun, rerun slope boot, make a new bootstrap sample. Total nonsense, and then we could get get CI on that slope boot. Slope boot. Gotta spell it right. Okay, so that's my confidence interval um, from method one. Um, and then the typical confidence interval here, that's the conf int on M1, and it's gonna be pretty similar. Um, so uh, in this case, the bootstrap confidence interval is pretty similar, similar to the one based on the uh, assumptions conditions for inference. Um, I guess we could see if the conditions are upheld because if they are, then that's one reason why we would expect them, the intervals to be similar. Yeah. Well, normalcy is a little bit uh, violated here. We've got that S shape, um, but the, the intervals are pretty similar. Um, and again, you could try and create a bootstrapped confidence interval for um, GP. Oh, I think this is actually asking for SAT, M, and HSGPA. HSDPA, because we already did SATV. So try out those two, and I'll tell you what my confidence interval was. Okay, so uh, for SATM, I got uh, 0 0.000415, 0 0.002, um, which doesn't include zero. So we're pretty confident there is a relationship. And for HSGPA, I got uh, 0 0.406 to 0 0.701. So we're very confident there is a relationship. And uh, you might not have found these exact numbers because your bootstrap samples would be different, but uh, they should be on this same scale like that. Um, I've put some more uh, resources for reading about these methods. There's this textbook called Modern Dive, which has chapters on bootstrapping and hypothesis testing, which I think are really good. Um, and then there's some more um, detailed papers if you wanna uh, really get into the weeds.